Knowledge is power, and when you know more, you can make better decisions for your body, your health, and your future. There aren't many decisions bigger than having a kid, but for many women, their fertility is a big question mark. If you want kids today or maybe one day in the future, clinically sound info about your body can help you make the decision that's right for you. That's why Modern Fertility was created. It's an easy and affordable way to test your fertility hormones at home with a simple finger prick. Mail it in with a prepaid label and you'll get your personalized results within 10 days. You'll get insight into your hormone levels, your ovarian reserve, aka how many eggs you have compared to other women your age, and other important fertility factors. The results go deep into what every hormone means and you can also talk one-on-one with a fertility nurse to review your results and options for next steps. I had actually never thought of testing my fertility, but after looking at the hormones that will be tested, I'm really curious about the test. So they check things like your prolactin, which stimulates milk production and pauses ovulation after you give birth. I'm going to do the test and we'll see what happens. Right now, Modern Fertility is offering our listeners $20 off the test when you go to modernfertility.com slash think loud. That means your test will cost $139 instead of the hundreds or thousands it could cost at a doctor's office. Get $20 off your fertility test when you go to modernfertility.com slash think loud. Modernfertility.com slash think loud. I just tried my first pair of jeans on in about four years and they weren't just any jeans. They were good American jeans and y'all. I'm pretty sure you've seen a few of my photos recently because I'm obsessed. I've never had jeans hug my body like this. The fabric feels so luxurious and there's never a gap in the waistband. I've tried on a size 8 and I've tried on a size 12 and they both fit me really, really well. I've seriously never had jeans hug my body like this. Good American offers a size range of double zero to 32 and they're all about inclusivity and body positivity. What makes it even better is that the brand is even female founded. If you ever want to try the jeans that will make you feel confident about your body and give you your best butt ever, go to goodamerican.com think and use code think at checkout for $50 off your first pair. Again, that's think for $50 off your first pair at goodamerican.com think. Ooh, that's how it makes me smile. It's the sound of another sale on Shopify, the all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. Shopify gives entrepreneurs the resources once reserved for big business so upstarts, startups, and established businesses alike can sell everywhere, synchronize online and in-person sales, and effortlessly stay informed. Believe me, this podcast started out selling absolutely nothing. And today we're selling our personal Think Loud Crew merchandise on our own website serviced by Shopify. I love how Shopify has the tools and resources that make it easy for any business to succeed from down the street to around the globe. You can synchronize your online and in-person sales, gain insights as you grow with detailed reporting of conversion rates, profit margins, and beyond. Go to shopify.com slash Think loud, all lowercase, for a free 14-day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Grow your business with Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash think loud right now. Shopify.com slash think loud. Welcome to the Think Loud Crew Podcast. Three moms getting real with parenthood, relationships, and the WTF moments of our daily lives. Today, we have a really special guest. Um, It is Christina. She's one of our really close friends. We've grown up with her. One of of my oldest friends. Oldest friends. Yeah. Aw, hi, Christina. Hey, girl. Welcome. <laughs> hey, girl, what's up? Can okay, I wait. start something off really fast that was on my mind on my way here? Can I say something? Go ahead, girl, You say got it. the floor, um, sis. I just you. wanted to say, you guys, um, 
One thing that I like to wake up in the morning um, is realizing what we're surrounded by and what we're thankful for. Sometimes we forget and wake up and say, you know, I wish this happened or that happened. But you have to look around and remind yourself what God has blessed you with already. So just saying thank you to God. Thank you to the universe for what, you know, is in front of your face. Like if you only have one client or if you have this or you have that, you just say thank you, God, for blessing you for what you have and what you don't. There's Zach, y'all. Uh, uh, Zach just finished just working God. out. So he said, thank you, God. <laughs> Gratitude comes in many different yeah, ways. So I think I just wanted to start off with that. So today we have Christina is one of my bestest friends in the whole wide world. Um, we met. Do you want to tell the story of how we met? We met in your kitchen yes. during a party. Oh my God, is this when Darla was there and Jasmine? I think we like we all kind of met. No, around. I went with Charnel and like Milan. But I can literally picture you guys Aww. in the kitchen. That's funny. I don't know. I went in the kitchen and I asked if you guys needed help cleaning up. Yes. And Kyle was like, oh my God, I love her. <laughs> no one ever asked us no to clean up. No one ever asked to help me clean up. <laughs> Can we be friends? And next thing you know, I'm spending the night at the house. <laughs> I feel like... Because we used to have a lot of parties at the yeah. house growing up. A lot of parties, kickbacks. Like we were at the entertainment house and we would play music, you know. We'd be inside the house, outside the house. So like I would cook. My parents would cook. There was always uh, there was always like something fun. going yeah. on. Mm -hmm. So Christina was the first person who actually like offered to. I didn't know her. <laughs> she didn't know me. I, didn't know, I know, but I'm in. We didn't know house. each other, That's and rude. she was so nice. And I was just like, hey, like, you know, I wanted to be friends with her, and the rest is you history. Know, we're still we're yeah. still together, y'all. We exchanged numbers. Next thing you know, Kyle's invited me to spend the night. I come and meet Cheyenne for the first time. She scares the shit out of me. Oh my god, I knew you were gonna say that. Always. So I'm always gonna mention how scary Cheyenne was when I first met her. Really? How, how old she was, was I? I had to be I've like never, 12. When was like 12. I've never met a more intimidating child. <laughs> 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 what did I do to you? You always tell everybody, ah, when we met, it wasn't it. I'm like, what did I do? You swear like you've changed. You're still intimidating. Cheyenne was probably like, who are you? But like, you, mean, yes, like, you like, don't intimidate me anymore. But when I met you, yes, you have Aww. a very intimidating. No, I think it's just my face. And it's not <laughs> even like I'm trying to have a resting bitch face. I just feel like my face sometimes is just reading resting bitch face. But I'm <laughs> but genuine. You're but I'm so sweet. I feel oh, like no, you're one of the nicest people. Thanks. Cheyenne <laughs> means well. It's just that I read everything on my say, face. She likes to read she likes to assess the situation, observe, and while she's doing that, you know, she doesn't have. She, a, you can see her processing. Face. Like you know how people say, like, oh, like but you don't have me, a filter, like when you say certain things. Mm -hmm. I feel like my face doesn't have a filter. I mean, I yeah. understand that because I have a resting bitch face most of the time. So, and Relatable. I feel like I'm very. Um, Straight to the point. Yeah, you're a direct person. Who are you and person. why are you in this house? That's exactly and what you where said. did you come from? Where did you come from? <laughs> and that's exactly what it was. But you also have to remember when I was younger, I was a little bit more reserved in regards to like first meeting people. So like I walk in the house because I was like, hey, I'm here. And Kyle's like, yeah, just come in. And I'm like, yeah. uh, okay. For the and record, Christina. Just, Who are you? And I was like, um, Kyle's friend? I didn't yell at her. I didn't yell at her. No, no. You were just <laughs> like. You said Kyle's friend? <laughs> I just promise. very. Very, we're working on it. He's straight to the point. Yeah, where'd fine. you come from? Yeah. I didn't say where'd you come from. No. That's very much Cheyenne still to <laughs> this day. Yeah, it, it is. We were fine yeah. right after. I it feel like just, I've gotten worse. It was just a random person walking into your <laughs> house. I think so too. <laughs> Cheyenne will just be in your ass. Like, why Why are you here? Yeah. Why oh. do you like this person? <laughs> She's learned. For what? She's like, look, let's not beat around the bush. Like, what's the deal? Who are you? Um, what's, what's going on? Like everybody needs a friend like that. Point. Yeah, but um, I love Christina. She's one of my favorite people in the world. I love the growth that she has. Well, let's done talk in about life. Her yeah, so I'm excited to dive into it. I'm like, there's so, so much. Tina had a podcast. What do you guys still do the podcast? It's a work in progress right now, but we did have one season. It's called Ao What the Fuck, and it is come. Oh, sorry for my language. I don't know. If, no, okay. go ahead. You're fine. <laughs> it's um, it's like the we cuss here. Look, it's like the single 
non-mom version of you guys oh i like <laughs> I that it. i like that but we described it as the conversations that aren't meant to leave the group chat so, uh, okay so you know our really thing cool. is like the things that you think in your head that you yeah. wouldn't say wouldn't out loud, say out loud. <laughs> yes so it's along that. the same lines of Just it step across or come behind. go mom come on <laughs> I need to pee. Which way do I go? <laughs> okay, so I if just have one thing to say, say about the Tina's podcast. So I remember one day my dad called me. Oh, your dad loves to mention this. And yes. he was like, Have you have you heard? I'm like, what are we talking about? And he's like, Have you listened? Yeah. So the thing is he didn't Tina's actually podcast. he didn't listen to the podcast and that was right before we did our podcast. So Clubhouse was happening. I met with two of my homegirls and we had really great chemistry and we wanted to start a podcast. Mm-hmm. So we wanted to test it on Clubhouse first to see, you know, the feedback we would get. And the topic of the conversation for Clubhouse and the title was um, men like to eat ass. So your dad loves to bring that up because he's like, what the heck is, you know, like, what is he talking about? Yes. And it was actually a very interesting conversation. But they were on Clubhouse and I'm like, dad, I haven't heard the podcast because I don't even I haven't seen them like say this is where you listen to it. But he's like, so he so like maybe like two weeks before that, he had me invite him into Clubhouse. That's and and the first thing he the first thing this. he hears is Tina talking about men eating ass so he calls me and he's like did you listen i'm like i didn't listen to the clubhouse he's like well have you heard the podcast i'm like i don't think there's an episode out yet and he's like you need to tell her (laughs) that i listened and i was on clubhouse and i click and it's her and and the girls and they're talking about eating ass i'm like okay dad i'll let tina know all i want you guys to know is that men love firstly getting their ass ate as well as eating (laughs) hey yo what the fuck (laughs) Exactly. 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 But that is not what all of our episodes are about. That was just a tester episode on Clubhouse. That's a very. So what were your episodes? How many episodes did you guys put out? Um, I believe we have about 13 episodes out. That's that's good. good. So we're like on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts. We're on um, YouTube. And you guys had guests too. That's awesome. So we had quite a few guests. Um, It was funny. It's like a little comedy type, sex type. That sounds very just, like single fun. Yeah. yeah. It was just like Raw, about what we got yeah. going on through the week. Um, funny stories that we've experienced. Um, th- talking about sex. It's like a, it's, I guess so, people would call it like a sex more comedy. Sex podcast. Out of I like 13 that. episodes, what do you think like your favorite topic or favorite episode would be? Mm-hmm. My favorite episode, it's only because there's this one clip. And it's hilarious of um, us talking about like past relationships or getting back with people that we have like removed ourselves from. And we were talking about heights with like height of like of men. Mm -hmm. And my friend goes, yeah, I dated like a guy who was like six, seven. And my homegirl Jordan goes, I said, oh, so you had to jump to catch the dick in your mouth. Jordan said, no, she had to climb it. (laughs) It was just really funny. (laughs) But um, to catch the dick. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) She said, we're not catching anything. Climb up that thing and take hold. I always say that when short guys hit on Kyle, my mom and I are always cracking up like they trying to climb that tree right Basically. i say so. getting hit on it's it's the the eyes and the boobs i'm like that's I, what they're probably looking at they're like yeah i can just it's motorboat i'll just be right uh, eye level no, with you, you guys want to hear this if you guys want to hear a men's perspective on different topics of relationships and sex go check it out and yeah yes, i love that <laughs> hey yo what the so you fuck? said it's on spotify and apple music it's on or spotify, apple, apple music and apple Pod. yeah apple Podcasts and youtube when do you guys when do you think you're gonna start filming again <laughs> probably within the next couple of months um we were transitioning through studios so we had a few episodes that were recorded and the studio space wasn't really our vibe so we had mm-hmm. to re-record all those episodes so it's just been wow. a process and then People got new that. jobs and life happened. So it's like, okay, it's, it's a process. A lot. It it's is. a lot. It's hard. Like, it's scheduling. literally it's a job. job. It's, 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 a job. it's dedication. And it, it yeah, is. it's not an easy thing to do. So much yeah. respect to you for that. But it's fun. So this isn't new to me. We could talk about whatever y'all want. Yes. <laughs> She's ready. Table. So besides the podcast, what if someone says like, Tina, what do you do? What's your answer? Shit, I have no idea. I, um, <laughs> I love. I'm you know, not I'm just experiencing that. Like, I'm, trying to, idea. I'm trying to figure that out. Um, I have a regular job. You know, they pay me. <laughs> but is that what I do? No, that's just what's paying my bills. What do I do? I don't know yet. 
What is your ideal? As a creative, like you're super creative. Do you have hobbies? Yeah. yeah was, what's your ideal I'm, job? What is something that you would want to do? Probably work with kids, if anything. So, I didn't know that. I like, I really yeah, didn't know I always that. wanted to start a nonprofit for, um, like women who have experienced domestic or physical abuse okay. or like children who have dealt with that as well. So that's something that I really want to get involved in. Um, I'm trying to take up pottery. So that's been interesting. Aww. I'm looking for a new studio. I write still, but I keep that more into cover now. Nobody, oh, nobody hears is that. That's a shit great humble. writer. <laughs> I love that. I didn't, I guess I learned something new today. I knew you love kids because you're so good with ours. But I didn't know that you. I mean, she is it's yesterday. Real. Yesterday, so she we we were swimming, and she was over here making the kids scared. But Christina was getting a. <laughs> she was living her best life. She was the laughing kids. Was with how much fun like, I was having. She was having so much like genuine. She was like, "Did you catch that? Did you catch that?" Oh my I'm like, god! They were genuinely scared. It was hilarious. I but love I it. love that. I love that I learned something. I've known you for years, but you I like to that. cook. Yeah, I do like to cook from scratch. I like how we're all telling her the things that she <laughs> like, likes to do. She said, I was going to bring it up, like, but we what? were talking about other stuff. I was going to say I like cooking as well. I like to bring all my friends together and yes. cook dinner and have game nights. Like, Do you mind telling our listeners your age? I'm 31, turning 32, <laughs> right after Kyle. <laughs> In September. <laughs> yep. No, it's Virgo really babies. cool. So, you know, I, I'm ours 18th letter. That's a little fascination of mine. And both of your birthdays are on the 18th. Who's? Mine and Shannon's? Yeah. Oh, hey, girl. I didn't I realize know. that. <laughs> Me neither, girl. Happy birthday. <laughs> Stop. I'm done. Do you know, I like Christina twist, you is guys. a Virgo like me. <laughs> Virgos. Virgos. Oh, two Virgos oh, wait, and what? two Libras over here. Oh, my God. And two Virgo <laughs> Libra sandwich. So Aw. Virgos and Libras actually get along very well. Really? Do we? I swear we do. Well, okay. we do. Yeah, I was about to say, we do. <laughs> I, I feel like in the past, Tina would be like, I'm more your friend than your sister's friend now. That's because we would always gain we up on Kyle, and Kyle would just let us. Friends would decide to gang up on me with Cheyenne. No, I just think that they realize that they like me a little bit more than you, but they're already, <laughs> they're already, they're already yeah. friends with you. They're already your friends, so they don't want to like tell you that. Well, so I've they just like choose now passive get, aggressive ways. Mind. No, no, no. <laughs> I've had to learn how to be a friend, you know. Oh and yes, she I, has. I, yeah. I feel like that's just what they think, go through. They go. They've been there. With I don't me even think that it's phase that, of learning how to I be think, a friend. Like, I think I have different relationships with you and Cheyenne, and I think me and Cheyenne had a phase where it was just like. I would come over and hang out with Cheyenne yes. <laughs> and like me and Cheyenne would literally just do nothing together and it'd be like oh hey Kyle yeah. and, I was like, oh, like, and I'm like what or I'd be like hey I'm going to your house she's like oh well, I'm not gonna be there I said I know I'm gonna hang out with Cheyenne like what are you talking like, about like come on you know what it is like for Christina Christina was never like just a friend like Christina really became you know she was part of our family I'd say like that yeah. was, that's my sister um outside of you know outside of my blood um one thing my mom always says is like you can't pick your but you can pick your friends but you can't pick your family mm -hmm. and this is one of those situations where i feel like i've been able to like pick a friend and family like because that's just the role that you've played in my life like we've gone through so much together it's been a very big learning There's process been periods of times where we were you know thick as thieves then it's you know, we were enemies, frenemies. Like mm -hmm. we've had moments where we, you know, talk 24 seven to not talking at all. So it's like the multitude or like the spectrum of like where our friendship goes to me is very special because it's like, I know at the end of the day, I have your back. I know you have my back. Like yeah. I will, we will both do crazy things for each other, like out of a place of love and care of just knowing like, you know, at the end of the day, it's, just who when you say you had us, to learn how like, to be a friend what does that mean okay i think that reflects uh, off of both of us i'm gonna let you say I something first how but to be a friend for me i had to learn that i have to be more mindful and respectful that people have different experiences and just because you may see a version of their life or their experiences it's um you don't know everything that that person needs or wants mm -hmm. or craves or desires you or know? just dealing with or, or is dealing with. So I had to learn how to come outside of myself and ask more questions or learn how to be more involved, more supportive, to be more consistent. 
Friendships um, are like relationships. They are relationships. So it's like any man that I talk to, date, it's like, you know, there's my sister, but it's there's Christina too. Because mm-hmm. Christina is my longest long term relationship. That's funny because you know? the person I'm dating now, I said, I just hope you know that you're dating me, but you're also dating Kyle. It's not, like, that's, <laughs> you know, like part of I I feel that because it's, um, it's y'all are my y'all are my key holders when i say that y'all know the secrets like to me like Mm -hmm. if someone really wants to get to know me or they need it yeah it's y'all are trying to get past that wall y'all are like it's like don't buy a hint here's the here's your uh here's the people that you here's your cheat to do you feel like you had to learn how to be a friend i think i had to learn how to be a friend in a different perspective i had to learn how to get out of myself and to really kind of stop being so reactive and to learn Mm. patience with not thinking that everything is an attack because Mm, I think for so long I've always been somebody who was in survival mode and so with that it's always a reaction and everybody's out to get me and in reality it's no I'm having trauma responses that doesn't mean that these people are causing that trauma yeah so it was learning really how to separate every relationship that I have and give people what they deserve. So realizing how I'm going to, like if I'm giving Kyle this energy, does Cheyenne deserve this energy as well? Or does Shannon deserve this kind of energy? Mm -hmm. Like I think I was giving so much that I expected so much back in return when in reality, it's like not everybody deserves the same amount of Mm -hmm. love or trust or energy or time that you give. Mm -hmm. So that definitely adjusted my friendships and helped my friendships because now I, 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 Get what is reciprocated back, like, like back yeah. to me. Like, That's such it. a good yeah. answer. That was a really good yeah. answer. Do you- <laughs> I'm looking at you like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> so, I love this really can I beautiful. Touch on that. One thing that I've learned from Christina is like growth, and she truly inspires me on the daily to keep growing and to push. Because one, she's she's overcome a lot, and she's someone who. I, I don't I don't want to say she like you're not right here. Christina, you are someone. <laughs> oh my God, Shannon, I feel like we should leave the room. Right, I'm like, oh, shit. No, I'm like, okay. You don't ever talk about shit. us like this. God damn. Bro, bitch. Bro, God damn. Kyle, this is like a Shit, I really should have invited you to my birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is like a Shit, I really should have invited you to my birthday party. You done poured your heart out to Tina a few times. Is there an argument going on that we don't know about? Like, no, oh my God. I should just say Christina. Like, <laughs> I talk and deal with y'all all the time. Like, Bro, go away. We've been on here for 50 episodes. You've never talked to you us never. like this. And then, I'm like, okay. Oh my gosh. She said, I can't even say she. She's right here. Christina. <laughs> Christina. Christina. I just want to tell, tell, tell you, you one more time. You're just the best friend. And I'd like all to say, all toes. I need to say <laughs> is haters are going to hate. First of all, okay no, we're that. not hating. Oh, no, I'm it. totally hating. With the brain <laughs> is so much shit. They're like, hey, why are you and Cheyenne so bitter? <laughs> yeah, we're bitter. Okay, I'm actually very bitter right now. Okay, so if you Shan want, is such a beautiful person. She's such a beautiful person. You know what's the funny you part? Are you are one of the best people in my life. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm gonna let heartedly <laughs> listen. I'm gonna let Kyle no. finish, but then I'm gonna because I'm, I'm the speak kind of Cheyenne person. No, like, hey no. guys, let's do an We actually breaker. don't want Kyle to finish. No, <laughs> she doesn't. <laughs> Same time, I can be like, hey guys, let's do an icebreaker and tell us something that we all oh like about gosh. each other. And Cheyenne <laughs> would tell me like, bro, no one's doing that. <laughs> that's so funny go away i would say like you're lame yes uh, you're a loser <laughs> which is really funny because at a, a i think shy is, is probably like one of the shy is probably one of the corniest like most giving people ever but she puts on this Mad front corny. like she's not like Cheyenne, i love it no matter what cheyenne always celebrates my birthday yes and she does it she so does. um she nonchalantly does. like yeah we're just gonna go to dinner or whatever tina <laughs> but it's like <laughs> but like, she always takes it in the nicest places and try to feel so special nice. for my birthday birthday she does that for everybody and it's like for everybody she cares and loves about but like yeah. you, <laughs> yeah. let me run that back but like she always makes sure everybody feels involved and is included in everything oh. so it's like I love that you're like, oh my God. Like, I know you're not an affectionate person. So I'm just like, I'm not going to be everybody affectionate to Shy. But at the end of the day, Shy loves love. 
Shy is <laughs> such a lover of love. I just don't lover. like to be like touched and like. That's yeah. why you do. To- no, she she don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, she don't. Just do that. No, she don't. I just don't like certain. Like, That's why when Shy gets us hugged, it's like, like, oh my god, oh, oh, and I get a hug. Today. Let's get back to when I any time I see somebody hugged, hug, back to Christina's growth. Hold on. Thank you. You want to keep sucking her tits, Kyle? No. Talk about her. This is no. This is something that I've learned. Like this is a message I have for people. Like you don't have to become your circumstance. It's like you can grow outside of yourself and learn and like keep pushing. And that is something I've learned from Christina. And she is probably the most like when if I you say, don't get this. Hand <laughs> my face, I keep looking like, at Shine's it. Already so mad at you about talking too much about me. And now you putting your head. No, in her but face. the other day I posted something on the page about adulting and people were like F adulting. And I like adulting is so hard. I'm like adulting is super hard. But Christina, I think adults very well. At times, I just put on a friend and make you guys think I'm adulting well. No, but you're doing <laughs> you're good. Like, me. You're fine. <laughs> Ooh, that sound makes me smile. It's the sound of another sale on Shopify, the all in one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. Shopify gives entrepreneurs the resources once reserved for big business, so upstarts startups, and established businesses alike can sell everywhere, synchronize online and in-person sales, and effortlessly stay informed. Believe me, this podcast started out selling absolutely nothing. And today we're selling our personal Think Loud Crew merchandise on our own website serviced by Shopify. I love how Shopify has the tools and resources that make it easy for any business to succeed from down the street to around the globe. As busy moms, we don't all have the time to create merchandise, ship it, do everything, you know, hands on. So through Shopify, we were able to connect with manufacturers that produce our products to get them to you quicker. You're able to reach customers online and across social networks with an ever-growing suite of channel integrations and apps, including Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, and more. You can synchronize your online and in-person sales. Gain insights as you grow with detailed reporting of conversion rates, profit margins, and beyond. More than a store, Shopify grows with you. This is Possibility, powered by Shopify. Go to shopify.com slash thinkloud, all lowercase, for a free 14-day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Grow your business with Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash thinkloud right now shopify.com slash think loud knowledge is power and when you know more you can make better decisions for your body your health and your future there aren't many decisions bigger than having a kid but for many women their fertility is a big question mark if you want kids today or maybe one day in the future clinically sound info about your body can help you make the decision that's right for you that's why modern fertility was created It's an easy and affordable way to test your fertility hormones at home with a simple finger prick. Mail it in with a prepaid label and you'll get your personalized results within 10 days. You'll get insight into your hormone levels, your ovarian reserve, aka how many eggs you have compared to other women your age, and other important fertility factors. The results go deep into what every hormone means and you can also talk one-on-one with a fertility nurse to review your results and options for next steps. Traditional testing with your doctor can cost over $1,000, but Modern Fertility gets you the same info at $159, a fraction of the price. And if you go to modernfertility.com slash thinkloud, you can get $20 off your test. Also, if you have an HSA or FSA, you can put those dollars towards Modern Fertility. I had actually never thought of testing my fertility, but after looking at the hormones that will be tested, I'm really curious about the test. So they check things like your prolactin, which stimulates milk production and pauses ovulation after you give birth. There's another hormone that they test that regulates the length of your cycle. They check different hormones within your thyroid. So it's a really cool thing. It's a sex hormone. I'm going to do the test and... We'll see what happens. Right now, Modern Fertility is offering our listeners $20 off the test when you go to modernfertility.com slash think loud. That means your test will cost $139 instead of the hundreds or thousands it could cost at a doctor's office. 
get $20 off your fertility test when you go to modernfertility.com slash thinkloud. Modernfertility.com slash thinkloud. But I'm saying like I'm I surviving. get to sometimes like vicariously live through her life and it's like I'm a mom of two. I'm at home like you're in the dating field like there's different things that you're doing. You're exploring yeah. your hobbies. So it's like I want to hear more about that. <laughs> like what is it like nowadays being out in the world like single single um woman without any children like what is that like now <laughs> no, what, yeah, is, that what is, is that you said you were dating or the person you're dating so i'm yeah. i'm confused are we single or are we not um technically single but i'm not dating anybody else except for this person and it's going well um I think with this particular situation, I'm learning a lot in regards to communicating properly, making myself uncomfortable in order yeah, to like really it. work towards something. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a mutual thing. So like, I don't necessarily want to have a conversation, but they open the floor and allow mm -hmm. it to be a comfortable situation as opposed to past relationships where it's kind of like, if you say something, then there's a problem. I don't receive that same energy. So, um, it's it's a learning experience, but like, it's a good um, learning experience. Go ahead. Do you feel like you're learning a lot about yourself? Yes, like definitely. Like a new version of yourself. I'm and learning how to actually be in something that's healthy. Oh. But, and that's yeah, that and that's yeah. a lot of work in itself cuz like you said in your we were talking about traumas, like I feel like traumas always come up within relationships. So mm -hmm. how have you been going? We talk a lot about therapy. Have you been going to therapy to help yourself? Oh girl, my therapist, traumas? my best friend. Sorry. You know how you move your people in your top on your um, messages for your yeah. Mm -hmm. iPhone? Yeah, my therapist is up there. I how did you that. find your therapist? Um, so I have a friend who is a therapist mm -hmm. and she has a therapist and her therapist recommended my therapist so it was just a whole bunch of therapists throwing therapists at me that's actually really did cool it take a, <laughs> yeah did it take a while to find the perfect therapist to yes. help you and you feeling comfortable to tell this person about your trauma i and wanted somebody that was going to reflect me so mm -hmm. my therapist looks very similar to me she is a younger woman of color but we have the same mixes um also it took a while for us to really build our relationship and figure that out because we when we first started i've been with her for over almost two years now yeah um but when we first started i we would talk and i'm pretty i'm a pretty open person because that's just how i am i'm, I'm okay with being open but it's all about how you're responding to me so at first um you know she would just talk and she would give me a little advice and whatever and i took a break from her and then I had a breakdown and I reached out to her and I said, listen, you already know too much about me. I'm not building this relationship with somebody else. I need mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. We need to start this up again. So when we started it up again, she approached me differently. She was more relating to me. So I knew more about her and it wasn't just a conversation about me. And it was more so a friendship that we were building um, through our therapy. So I like, that. like when we talk, it's like, hey, girl, let me tell you about so what you happened. How often do you do it? I do it once every two weeks. Okay. Yeah, so I go to her every other week. Is it through insurance? Uh, yeah. No, I pay that. her out of my pocket, but um, she's amazing because she knows that, you know, financially it's yeah. not an easy situation to go to therapy. But her thing is, this is my job. If I have to give you free sessions sometimes in order to make sure you don't miss, then that's what we will do. I love so, that. Yeah. So that's she's amazing. Big, that's, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. She's like, this is what I love to do. I'm not doing it to get paid i'm doing it to help you well, i also I like think that. that expense i feel like people don't realize like going to therapy is a self-care thing like mm -hmm. just like how we get our nails done our brows done and stuff like that that's an like you can put that towards your therapy for a self-care and making yourself feel beautiful and good within yourself so i think that's I feel like that expense isn't like something that it's like a dreading. No, mm -hmm. depending on how you feel though. But I therapy has been a big um, thing that's been a part of my growth. Like that's yeah. the reason why I'm doing so well and why you know I get through the daily. Like people don't like to talk up talk about mental illnesses and touch base on that, but it's like so many of us have been through so many traumas, and mm -hmm. especially in. Um, a community of color like we don't really acknowledge mm -hmm. that that actually affects our mental and therapy is amazing go get it <laughs> um, <laughs> do you think therapy has helped you become a better dater wait do you think you're a good dater 
I think I'm a fucking great dater. You are lucky if you get to date me. I heard that. <laughs> so do you think therapy has helped you become better at dating? Oh, definitely. No, yeah, therapy has definitely helped. Like I said earlier, like I've been very, I've always been very reactive. So it kind of gives me a moment to think things over or even just to before acknowledge. You react. Even not even yeah. always before I react, but even to acknowledge how I react and to mm-hmm. take a step back and then speak on it with a person. So yeah, it's it's helped. I'm not as crazy as I used to be. This bitch is still crazy. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not as crazy. crazy. I didn't say I wasn't crazy. I said I'm not as. Yeah, see how she turned up real quick. I said I wasn't crazy. I said I'm not as she crazy. She said I just learned how to react I a little love, different. I love that you can say that you have grown and you can see the growth within yourself. Like, yeah. and um, if I'm dating somebody and they can't deal with my crazy, then we don't need to even yeah. talk to them because yeah. that's <laughs> so real. Or like, like even yeah, how they handle this situation? I'd be like, nope, they're, that's not it. Or I'd be like, well, we've got some potential. Like, you guys saw me when I was drunk and um, the person I'm dating wasn't, and I think they handled it very well. <laughs> I think you need to be with somebody who is strong. Mm-hmm enough to handle yes strong-minded enough to handle your strong personality but also somebody that's very nurturing and loving and and nice who will take on like when you're high you're high and take on when you're low you're low you know what i mean like no definitely balance you out yeah and someone who's gonna like enforce into you your worth and your beauty and just like everything that's beautiful that makes up Tina, the good and the bad. I feel like you need someone who's going to like pump up your head. I agree. Because Tina is Me a too. beautiful. <laughs> Damn, you, I just turned into Kyle. Because you are, you are a very strong person. Because, wow, shy. But you do need somebody to take like, that on. Thanks you for the for sure turned into Kyle. <laughs> But it's okay. I feel like obviously you, you guys, I'm amazing, and everybody loves me. <laughs> but you are a very strong woman, yeah, yeah. and mm-hmm. you don't take shit, and you are very. What is it like? Giving, nurturing. giving. <laughs> Christina is so giving. You love hard. Oh my you love God. hard. Yeah. And she will. If you are her friend, she will not put up with any type of shit that you are going through. Like. Yeah, Shannon. Shannon's like, you'd be talking way too much shit to me. <laughs> but it's also, if you're like, if you're not a friend, if you're a friend of a friend and something's going on, like, Christina will extend herself. Yeah. Like, she is, she is, I'm sorry. You are <laughs> someone who genuinely, like, you cares about, you care about people. Yeah. Like, you want to see everyone happy and, like, doing well. Like, if we're having something going on at the house and not everyone's smiling, you're going to the person not smiling and you're going to be like, <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you what what do we need Damn. to change you know? what's wrong bitch yo you come with food you come with a drink you come with a smile you come with a story like you brighten the room like there's some people when they come in a room like i'm gonna come on this podcast more i was about to Damn. say Damn. You have, if you want to get your hands on me if you're ever nice. feeling low be like can i come back y'all, y'all ever feel i'm gonna just low? replay this episode <laughs> you a question say, put your instagram in there you will keep us you will keep people entertained like you will keep them happy you'll be like you know what i feel better right now like <laughs> okay off of the compliments i want to ask you a question <laughs> sorry go ahead um Janice, i want i want you to speak because you have a lot to speak about um from being a friend being single how is it Being 31, not that there's an age of having kids and all that kind of stuff, but how is it being single and having three friends, like really close friends Mm -hmm. that have kids, you know, Cheyenne's a fiance, we have just kind of being at a different different point point in your life. How does it feel? Like, what is, what is that like? Um, it can get difficult because I think I've set up this idea of what I want for mm-hmm. my life and I want to be a mother. I feel like yeah. that's what I am made for. I feel like I would be an amazing one. Please God. Amen. Um, but <laughs> I also understand that things will happen in time. So I think I'm just, I, and it, it was hard for me to get to that point mm-hmm. to have that understanding and to be okay with not being where I necessarily would have hoped I was like yeah. where I was, um, at this point in my life. But I'm just enjoying your children, you yeah. know? I, I know feel that. Like I just thought about it. A lot of your. A not, lot to, of my, not, th- not to put it out there, like, not to make you feel. Like, no, but most of my friends but are. Most mothers. of your friends are. <laughs> yeah. A lot of your close friends are mothers. Yeah, most of my friends. I think the only people that are not moms that I am friends with are people that I've 
met recently. Recently, yeah. Like our newer friends. But your majority of my close friends old are friends amongst, are, yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Do you think it affects your friendships? Like I think that not so much because I think I am understanding of the fact that you guys have different responsibilities than me, which is why I did have to go outside and make new friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that I do get that um, you know, I do have the but I'm also not somebody who likes to go out or to party like that and I am a big homebody, so it doesn't bother me too much. And I like coming over and hanging out with you guys and the kids. So it's not like really, it's not something that I really allow to affect my friendships. But I know I've had, like I've had conversations with Kyle where it was hard when she was pregnant or when she first had Zaire that me and her were communicating. And I was like, damn bitch, like, where are you? Like, I need you. Like, you're still my friend. And we had to work through that. But it's like. As long as I open, as long as we open the conversation and have that conversation and I'm willing to understand that, you know, we are just in different places, then I think it's fine. But it's being willing to be understanding of that. I like that. I like that you brought up saying like you have to have those hard conversations of with your friends of like where I'm at and where you're at Mm -hmm. in life. But it has to be a conversation. It can't be just an unknown no, because then you're expecting somebody to be a certain type of way and they have no idea that they're, what you're going through, that they're even yeah. being something the issue. Like you feel something. Yeah. So it's like, no, as long as you have a conversation, then I think it's OK. But I mean, I'm good. I could go to sleep whenever I want. Y'all I get rest. <laughs> I hate her. <laughs> Should I wake up refreshed? I leave your kids and go home. <laughs> I hate her so she much. She goes home and stretches out. It's like, I'm good. <laughs> like, Tina, what are you doing? Sleep? <laughs> I'm just watching the show. What y'all doing? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh yeah. If you ever are you can't watch show, it right now? Oh, that's okay. crazy. You ain't seen a season yet? That's crazy. Christina <laughs> always puts me on the show. She's like, girl, you behind. I'm like, help me. It's Cheyenne. Me and Cheyenne will watch a season yeah, together. Anyways, the the whole whole time. Time. I don't know how Cheyenne does Kyle doesn't watch shows. I feel like you don't watch do you watch shows? Kyle? I have a thing with TVs. She I does. It's funny because I won't send something to Kyle and I'll send it to Cheyenne and Cheyenne yes. and Kyle will be like, well, why didn't you send it? I was like, girl, why? You're not going to watch, watch it. it. <laughs> My I'll send it to Cheyenne and we'll have a whole conversation yeah. about it. <laughs> or Tina can come over and we can watch a whole the whole entire show. Yeah. And I'll we'll just sit there and watch. I think I watch TV you know once what? with Kyle. I'll be sitting there and I'll be talking shit the whole time. Kyle's not like, good to watch TV I'm with. No. I'm on the computer. Like, <laughs> no. Because we can't even talk about it. We will watch the season of Insecure together. I will say that. Yeah, but like, on New I Year's. All- <laughs> we did. We did. Okay. We, did. we, were we did just watch a show together, though, Kyle, and we actually watched it, but you were really into it. What was it called again? The show we just watched? Oh, on I Apple? Think, I think I was like, I'm not going to watch this. Show. On Apple TV. Which yeah, show did we was, just watch? I don't know what it was called. Um, I just told you to watch no. it. With no. the kids? With the kids? No, with the office. And the um, the oh, I know what you're talking about. Um, Severance. Severance. Oh, yeah. Yes. I that. Kyle actually, actually watched I that. was very dedicated to that yeah. show because it came out on Fridays and I would watch it either like I would watch it either Thursday, like midnight. Just yeah, you would like, watch it before me. Sometimes I like shot. it, and <laughs> or I would watch it on Friday, or it'd be like I'd be like, "Hey Tina, what you doing?" Like she's like, "You watch the show," and I was trying like, to no. watch she's the like, show. I watched it. I was like, oh. "Yeah, I would always wait for her to like <laughs> watch it, so I could be like, can we talk about it?'" Yeah, but then I don't talk about the her. end because I haven't seen the end yet. Oh my god, I've you gotta watch the show. It. So good though. Oh my god, you guys, Severance, Severance. Yeah, but I'm really, I'm not really watching that many shows. I would like to watch some shows. Anyways, I'm watching shows with Cheyenne. Shannon just broke yeah. off the. Off I'm gonna keep my show watching with Cheyenne. Me. You guys can be involved with it, but Wait, that's my dedicated. So show. We are true to this. Show. We like, are not my new dedicated to this. person. Okay. It's to the point where like Christina's like logged like some of her. Um, what is it? Streaming I have some apps. of her login. Yeah, Cheyenne's got streaming <laughs> apps. I'm like because uh, she would start sending me shows, and I'm like, this is rude. I don't have that. I'm like, it's cool. She's I got like, it. Here's the password. Yeah. I'm like, hell yeah, because this girl right the here. She really does have all the streaming <laughs> apps. I'll be like, I'm trying to watch this. She's like, here you go. But <laughs> I love it. Here's my. She's got here's everything. I'll be like, so I don't know what network this show is on. She's like, oh, it's on Stars. Here you go. That's oh, this the life of somebody with no children. So this beautiful dating and no kid life Tina's and apparently you're on a different planet than us where do you see yourself in five years oh I better have kids a house and a partner and they take how many kids kids in five Um, years probably two to three oh she said you getting busy yeah I want to have boom 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 oh just get them out the way oh and then leave me alone (laughs) shit then leave me alone (laughs) you do you see yourself married yes I do 
I see myself mm-hmm. married probably within the next couple of years. Are we living okay. in California? Or are you? Yes, moving? Kyle. We living in California. She was oh. gonna go to the East Coast so bad. She wasn't. Good. <laughs> Nobody wants to do that but you. <laughs> I like the weather out here. Right. We'll be by coastal. Tina oh. actually likes me. <laughs> <laughs> she wants to say bye. Us. Like wait, what? Girl, but wait, so living out here, you see yourself married. Cheyenne started with living out here. Yeah. Okay, okay. You see, see yourself you. with kids. Yes. Maybe adopting. Okay. okay. Why adopting? Just curious. I'm just open to it. I would love to bring a child into a happy home. I like that. I feel that. And I heard you say partner. <laughs> can, you want to touch on that so Can bad. we touch on that? Yes, a partner. What do you want to touch on? What that mean? <laughs> what, 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 what does a partner on? mean? What's a to partner you? mean? A person who is loving. <laughs> so you are an open book. I am open to love. I am open to somebody who is going to reciprocate my energy, who is going to give me what I deserve, who whether they are of male body or female body. I've been waiting for her to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's Aww. not really a factor in it. It's just about Love. what I'm receiving from and it. And what you were, yeah. You know, you have you back. dated? I'm probably going to say this totally wrong, so nobody please be offended. But have you always been open to dating like that? Or is I this don't new? think I've ever really thought about it because mm-hmm. it's never come up. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I met somebody who was not somebody I. We usually, usually date. date and it was easy and mm-hmm. it, it just happened naturally and it wasn't really a question of it it was just this person is reciprocating my energy so this is the first relationship that you were dating outside of outside, a, outside a male of a male body, body. <laughs> of a male yeah. body. i love that you're saying male body and because body. um not everybody is identifying identifying yeah. with their gender so it's like yeah male body mm-hmm. that doesn't make them not uh, who they uh, are so yeah yeah it just it's a good situation. It makes me happy. They make me happy. So I'm I'm good. <laughs> so sorry to stay on this Cheyenne subject. This is, Cheyenne, 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 this is why Cheyenne, 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 Chey
I get that you're saying you don't want to put yourself in a category, so, but I guess yes. I'm saying like if you were, Demi, it's demisexual. Okay, what so is that? What's demisexual? It's a person who, um, it's the it. Everything is based on an emotional connection. Oh, so got it. Yeah. So you're an emotional lover. Yes. So have these names always been around, yes. or are they all new? They're they've been around. We just we just aren't taught them, and we don't really talk about it, like or we're not more... necessarily exposed unless we're seeking it or in like certain communities. I think. I feel like it's been more pronounced. I feel like it's been. More, I don't know if it's pronounced. It's, it's I feel more. Like it's more oh, you're made more aware of it now. I think, yeah. I think people are more aware of it and are more open to talk about it. That's because it. we're the new generation of parenting. I would, but I would say like two years ago, but we didn't I talk didn't, like, like this. I and when I would like get it. my emails, nobody's listing their pronouns Pronounce at the bottom. Yes. Yeah. And now it's like it's the pronouns. It's like if there. you don't put them, you're. You're wrong. Yeah. So I feel like right now it's, it's very. It's, um, well. it's, it's a very learning process culturally. Hei- it's not heightened. I don't think that's the right word, but it's just like in your face a lot. It's more common. Okay. It's just yeah. it, people it's, are yeah, more in people right settings because when we think of it like just how we fight for like black rights, freedoms, liberties. Yeah. There are liberties that are being fought from people of all groups, and it's like those things when they come up, it's it's a drastic change. So just imagine mm-hmm. when it went from, you know. Let's see, to, let's see what Kyle going to say. <laughs> what are you about to come up with? What's your example? Said, I like. I was trying to think of an example outside of slavery, just because like I feel like sometimes people are like, ah, I don't want to talk about it. But it's like you know, it exists. It exists. <laughs> it exists. Um, but just the difference of you know going from no blacks to places to blacks to places, where it's yeah. like, oh my god, it's all it's all in yeah, our it's face. face. Yeah. yeah, where it's like, no, this is just what is. Like yeah. we've been existing, we've been we here. We just haven't acknowledged. We just it. haven't. You, you have there have been certain like gatekeepers or things mm-hmm. that have blocked our presence, you know, okay. or yeah. it's not seen in media. It's not used I in words, think, but these are old terms and definitions. I think the world is becoming a little bit more, um, sorry, a little less um, ignorant. Yeah. yeah. Oh, ignorance is a good word. Is, and people are able to, to embrace their authenticity yeah. more. I think it's just like, an, uh, I think it's great. Yeah. It you is know great. What? So, Go. And wait, can I just tell you what pansexual is really fast? <laughs> Kyle wants to talk about no, pansexuality. Just, no, no, no. Someday. It's your <laughs> yeah, sexually no, no, attracted no, 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 no. or open to all people regardless of their gender, gender identity, or sexual orientation. So, so it's... I don't... And you yeah. said you're... Demi. 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 Demisexual. Okay. Demisexual. It's like an emotional yeah. connection. So many sexuals. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, it's, I'm like, <laughs> this what, is, um, this what is am I? Like, <laughs> like, like, you just a cis female, girl. You just a cis female. <laughs> what do I get to you be? You a heterosexual. <laughs> what do I get to be? You could be okay. anything, baby. Sometimes there's nothing easier than ordering takeout for dinner. It feels easy, but it's expensive. On the other hand, just thinking about the grocery store and having to play the what's for dinner game is exhausting. If you hate grocery shopping or simply don't have the time, Hungry Root is here to help. Hungry Root is the easiest way to get fresh, high quality food delivered to your door. They've got healthy groceries and simple recipes all in one place. A fun, short quiz is all Hungry Root needs to get to know you, your goals, and how you like to eat. Are you gluten-free? Noted. Do you like sweets? They'll keep it top of mind and get to work. Hungry Root will recommend groceries they think you'll love. Take their suggestions or choose what you want from fresh produce. High quality meat and seafood, pantry staples, and all the healthy snacks and sweets you'll ever need. Lately, Boz has been on a peanut butter kick and we got this peanut butter pouch from Hungry Root and he's really been enjoying it. You're not just getting your weekly grocery haul. You can also shop thousands of simple recipes that actually put your food to use. Everything Hungry Root offers follows a simple standard. It has to be delicious, quick to prepare, and made from whole, trusted ingredients. Spend less time shopping and cooking and more time enjoying healthy food that you'll actually love with Hungry Root. Right now, Hungry Root is offering Think Loud Crew listeners 30% off your first delivery and a free gift with every delivery. Just go to HungryRoot.com slash think to get 30% off your first delivery and choose your free gift. That's HungryRoot.com slash think. Don't forget to use our link so they know we sent you. I just tried my first pair of jeans on in about four years and they weren't just any jeans. They were good American jeans and y'all, I'm pretty sure you've seen a few of my photos recently because 
I'm obsessed. I've never had jeans hug my body like this. The fabric feels so luxurious and there's never a gap in the waistband. I've tried on a size 8 and I've tried on a size 12 and they both fit me really, really well. I've seriously never had jeans hug my body like this. These jeans made my butt look amazing. It is easy to see that this denim was designed to celebrate women's bodies. Good American offers a size range of double zero to 32, and they're all about inclusivity and body positivity. What makes it even better is that the brand is even female founded. If you ever want to try the jeans that will make you feel confident about your body and give you your best butt ever, go to goodamerican.com slash think and use code think at checkout for $50 off your first pair. Again, that's think for $50 off your first pair at goodamerican.com slash think. I have a question. I was at lunch the other day with the, um, some moms from writer's school and we were having a good lunch, but we got on the subject of like pronouns and mm. different things that companies are starting to do um, and schools. And one of the moms said that they're trying to pass right now um, in, I guess I want to say Los Angeles, I'm going to assume. The LA County? Yes, that you can no longer, kids can no longer refer to their parents as mom and dad what? at school. What? And that so they have to, to call them by their first names or they have to call them parental units or See, guardian one and oh, guardian because two. Of their, because of their pronouns. Because what if there's a kid in the class and their parents don't go by mom her dad. or him? Mm -hmm. So are do they go by mom and dad it would be inclusive of them but i'm like my kid is not walking around calling me exactly. guardian one and guardian two i feel no. like we're on an alien spaceship no. like guardian or one, parental like, units yeah, or by so my first name i feel like if your kid yeah. wants to call you your right. kid can call you whatever they want yeah. like that don't make a difference that to part. me but like my kid is gonna call me mom yeah and i don't think that that is offensive to the other mom in the group who wants to be called by their First name. First name, yeah. I what do you I mean, guys I think? I don't think they should keep trying to put us in these like structural categories, mm -hmm. whereas like now they're trying to redefine what everything. Everything. everything, where it's like more so just let's be more inclusive, like rather than fit into these these boxes. These boxes. Yeah, because it's like you're taking away a box, but then putting us into a whole nother box. Yeah. And and then, like, why does there have to be? But why does judged. there have to be a limit to what it, what, 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 what it is? is? Yeah. If that's what I you want to be referred know to, that. As, so like I'm right. Just, for me, I'm trying. So to, like, some schools are starting to pass that. it. I don't. I don't. I think that's unnecessary. That's unnecessary. That's, I feel like that's a lot, and then that brings confusion to the kids because mm -hmm. even with um, my close friend Charnel and Alexis, their son calls their mom's mom and umi and that was on them umi means is just it's another mom. it's a mom in a, just a different way but i just feel like that's so confusing because that's what they decided they wanted their son to call them right and exactly that's, and, and that's, that's fine yeah, and i think right. that's what it should be it's what your family in the household but i think it's not in the whole community yeah, it's unnecessary to say it, nobody call anybody anything mom right mom or dad you have to say guardian one or guardian yeah. two like that's I, I, don't that's, I think that's the purpose of wanting to strip away like people's identities in I, my perspective where so it's you like don't yeah i like I, I feel like that's what it's like yeah you're stripping, away, yeah, you're stripping away everyone like the same i feel like as long that as your kid sense. is aware of being accepting of other right. people, then yes. there's no then reason why right. you should, there, they should be uncomfortable. I feel like you should right. just why be call. a talk, yeah. which is also being taught. Like yes. the Talking cartoons in and the things that like cartoons are way different than cartoons were when I was watching cartoons. Ryder was watching a cartoon the other day and I heard her playing with her dolls after and she had two dads as the dolls. Mm -hmm. And I just asked her like, you What's, know, yeah. what are you doing? She was not like, what are you, what are you doing? But it was like, can I, can I play with you? What are we doing? And she explained the family dynamic of the dolls. And it was like, these are the two dads to the boy. And I said, oh, okay. And she went on to tell me about the cartoon that she had watched mm -hmm. and how he was in the cartoon, the 
she was like a vampire girl and the vampire had like two dads <laughs> or something and she was i don't know but i was like thinking i went and looked it up and i don't remember what never goes on but it was I would have never seen that as a kid yeah. and now our kids now are seeing very- it and it's like how to properly channel these conversations to make sure that Ryder understands the dynamics of mm-hmm. everything mm-hmm. and to be inclusive of everybody so that when she does see a little boy or little girl or whatever have you know the same sex parents she's not like well why do they have two moms how do you guys yeah. um navigate having those conversations like with it being more not more common i think that's kind of ridiculous but more um open to like two same-sex parent households i think for parker i think he's grown up with charnel and alexis and seeing that and i i don't think he's ever questioning because he knows those, those are yeah it's normal to him and he knows that they love each other so i don't think maybe i should have the conversation like auntie nell and auntie lex they're married or whatever but for him it's so normal do you it's, think it's necessary to have a conversation yeah, i don't, he think, sees it so. as normal? I don't think it's in a, uh, for you for me for yeah. me personally because he knows he's seen that dynamic since he was born yeah with them and he now sees auntie lex had a baby with with Charnel, yes. and so he sees that dynamic and he knows that that's his, so it's not parents. something that's going to cause confusion for i don't him. think so. right. i don't think so i don't where it would cause confusion for Ryder, for Ryder. Yeah. because yeah. Ryder hasn't seen that necessarily yeah. mm-hmm. and it's not like it's been it's not it's not that it hasn't been taught but we just it's, it's just not, it's not, it's not our world yeah, really, really in her so, daily or weekly yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah i would say now things are and this is across the board with different conversations not just about same-sex parents but just different i'll use Relations. this example we were in line um to take her to a summer camp i feel like i've told you guys this story before but i'll tell tina I think, yeah um and the little boy in front of us had like a maybe a, a regular spider-man like you know cartoon shirt on but then he had this beautiful Shine. red Tutu. skirt yes. and it was like sparkly it was <laughs> yes. too too down and then he had on like you know boy sneakers yeah and i'm holding Ryder's hand and all i'm thinking is okay is my kid this is gonna going be a conversation yeah like <laughs> is my kid going to point it out to me now or later like in front of him or very away vocal. from <laughs> y'all know writer has no filter no, so i'm i'm waiting for her to be like mom why does the little boy have a skirt on <laughs> and i'm sitting there praying like can we please have this conversation away like in from private. in private because i'm also gather my response. learning you know <laughs> yeah. and i don't want to say anything to offend yeah. anybody but <clears throat> i do the best i can to explain certain things and sometimes you make mistakes while explaining them yeah. so all i'm thinking is give me a moment to process yeah and explain. let's do it in the privacy of our home in case i do mess up i'm able to correct myself in peace without getting screamed at by a parent or something so Ryder starts to squeeze my hand and <laughs> and that is the first sign that she's about to say some shit. And I'm like, I beat her. I beat her to it so quick because the, the words were coming out of her mouth. And I said, isn't the skirt beautiful? <laughs> like I did not give this little girl a chance to say nothing foul or say anything. Who knows what she was going to say? She might have said, Mom, I want to wear a skirt to school. Skirt. We just so, not going to go there. We're just not going to go there. I said, <laughs> isn't it today. beautiful? And the little boy's dad turned around. His dad, sorry, Zach. His dad was fine. He was, <laughs> and, and I told her, oh, <laughs> <laughs> and Ky- so I told nobody about the dad. Kyle did drop off or pick up him. She said, "Have you seen the little boy with the red skirts, Daddy?" <laughs> That's hilarious. Yes. So I literally, Yo, husband said, he was like Spanish too. He, he was, was speaking. Fine. He was speaking to the kids. Yes. No, Kyle, Kyle, hold so, on. No, Kyle. So I literally turn around and I, the dad turns around and he just smiles at me because I think he understood. Yeah. Like yeah. I was. Shut up, Zay. <laughs> I'm, yeah, you have seen some fine mamas. Okay. Like, so, later on, when I pick Ryder up, 
I knew it was going to come up again in the car. Mm-hmm. And she said, Mom, the little boy with the red skirt, it's unfair. And I'm thinking, what's it's unfair? unfair? She don't got no skirt on. It was unfair that she didn't have a skirt on. And that's when I realized she's still too young to I have understand. certain. So to make it a problem. Yes. Or- she did not make it a problem that the little boy had the skirt on. She made it a problem that she didn't have the skirt on. That is on. so right. funny. So sometimes I realize that we don't have to have yes. certain conversations yes. just mm-hmm. yet. Because that's not even not what a, they're, they're not worried about it yet. Yeah, that's not even what she's thinking yeah. about. She's more concerned as to why she don't got it on, not as to why she still. I like that you just said that. Still an innocence yeah. to being a child, yeah. and I think in the world we live in, if if you could preserve your child's innocence as much as you can. I just think that with, some, there's not certain still, things like, you know exposed. You don't have this. You don't have to break it. Yeah. Yeah. Just yet, and yeah. so I got I reminded think, so quick. I don't think innocence is the right word because okay. I don't want to say when you have that conversation, then they're not innocent, innocent? anymore. Yeah. Okay, but. I, I just think, think that I get what you're trying to say, yeah. but I just feel like someone might take that offensively. That if you but have you don't that, need to, uh, you I just don't feel have like to. We're just, not, we're not talking been, about they, sex in general. No, so they, why am I going to bring up, you know, same sex if I'm mm-hmm. not talking about right different people sex? And that's like, probably why I haven't brought up to Parker. Do you realize that you have two yeah, aunties? Because now, but that's the thing, though. I think once you have that conversation, now you're allowing them to the, have a thought process that it's not, not right. Right. Or, so that, like, yeah, or it's, it's weird agree, yeah. or because whatever. That, yeah. yeah. Because it's like it's like if um, just a male and a female are in a relationship, that's not something you have to have a conversation right. about. You do have to have a conversation about sex or, you know, eventually, a healthy relationship eventually, or things eventually. like that. I think that's necessary. But as long as you allow yourself to normalize what is happening i think the conversation isn't going to be needed in that way right yeah because and Parker. i and i feel like that whole day i had so much not anxiety but like okay how am i gonna have this first conversation, conversation? Mm-hmm. and then i was reminded so quickly that you don't have to. i don't have to yet like she's, she's okay. still she's not taking she's still not asking certain questions where there's other conversations that we've had to have recently so there was a little girl in writers some class that had down syndrome but her brother um was in the class and she and he didn't have down syndrome uh-huh. but she would get in the swim pool also and she would um kind of she asked Ryder what her name was probably like the class is only like 45 minutes long. And I would say, I heard her say what your name, like, what's your name? What's your name? What's your name? Like the whole mm-hmm. entire time. Uh-huh. And I'm just like watching Rye to how see she's responding. how her patience level is. Mm-hmm. And also like, are you being nice? Are you responding? Mm-hmm. Are you splashing water on her? Like what is yeah, going to be your you, response? Yeah. And Ryder kept on saying, Ryder. <laughs> Ryder. <laughs> As she's trying to like tread water and stay up. Ryder. Aww. And then the I'm little girl Ryder. splashed her. Ryder is and Ryder. Ryder said, Can you please not do that? And the little girl splashed her again. And Ryder said, Can you please not do that? The little girl splashed her again. I'm just waiting to see if it's about to be a <laughs> girl fight read. or not. <laughs> And then the mom stepped in. So I think the oh. mom kind of saw, like, I was letting them figure it, it out. out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When we got in the car, Ryder asked, why does she look different? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting there driving and I'm like, okay, how, do, is. how, how, do, how do I have this conversation? conversation? And, and I don't, Ryder didn't use the word different. And she said, um, she said weird yeah she said mom why does she look weird and why did she keep asking me what my name was i kept telling her like i was like i don't get it so i had to have that conversation that not everybody is the same and that Mm -hmm. weird isn't Mm -hmm. a word that we're going to use to describe when someone's appearance or personality is is different than yours it's different from yours and i'm like okay that was a time where we actually have a conversation because now we have a moment to correct and yeah learn and understand yeah I think it's you know, when the good. kid correct, learn, and understand. Yeah, I like that, that too. I think it's <laughs> when the kid. Let me write that. Down. I think it's when the kids... I have a note of things where Shine says great things. Like, <laughs> I love it. girl, you got a note for all of us. <laughs> I'll make one. I probably have like I make notes on everyone. I'm I weird. Love it. But it's but like I'm... no things. I think that Shine says That's great, and us. then one day I'm gonna say <laughs> like you know yeah. Um. <laughs> well, one day on twelve fourteen, you told me at three p.m. But I think it's important. I think leaving the door open for our kids to ask the questions and that's when we should respond. I think that's better than us 
opening in our the door in our me. heads thinking oh my gosh i have to explain to you why you just saw what you saw mm -hmm. instead of let's just let our kids come to us so we can explain what your curiosity is and not our curiosity like yeah what we think you're so curious. getting out of your yeah, head, mm -hmm. getting out of your head. And kids are observant. They're very they observant. They may not say something kids, right then, but like what I've learned will, from Boz yeah. is eventually it'll you, come, out. Will come out. out. <laughs> it'll come out. Tina, when you are um, become a mother, do you think that there's going to be things that you pull from like your own, from grandma, from your friends, or do you think you're just going to start all the way from scratch? Oh, I'm coming from all y'all. Like, yeah. I think I'm lucky because I have that to look at. Like, I do see how you guys navigate and I do see your parenting and I do see um, what I do want to pull from. And, you know, sometimes I'm like, mm -mm, not me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I think also I've been around kids so much. I think um, without having them, I'm learning my own parenting skills. Mm -hmm. um, and I think when I have a child that will really. I feel like it'll come naturally yeah. to you too yes. as well. I agree. I think I so. Too. I feel like you're, parenting you like is one of those things nurturing. that I feel like you think you're going to pull from those people or like what you think you're, how you're going to be. Mm -hmm. But I feel like once you become that parent, it just comes like, oh, I didn't realize I was going to be that yes, nice right. or like <laughs> that crazy. Because sometimes <laughs> it shocks me how yeah. strict I am as a parent. Oh, like, I, I, didn't, I feel like I would probably relate most to you out of everybody, out of you yeah. three. I feel like, Shannon, like, because you have that. Because I, I do have like a strictness with me, which uh -huh. I always think that the kids, they love me. But I'm the type of person to be like okay well this needs to happen and we can have fun but you also need to you do this first. have this done yeah. or you yeah. need to follow these kind of yeah. rules like i'm like a teacher yeah i, I feel <laughs> like i never thought my mom would joke and say oh no i'm gonna have to say my grandchildren i'm like no no you're not i'm gonna be this hippie fun <laughs> hang loose mom but in reality i am i'm really not i feel like and i admire them hippie, for being such balls? a what's going on you are i feel like, you are, so, I feel like i'm a really strict parent and i'm like and i shannon's definitely the stricter one out of us yeah. so you guys I are think, very so i think once you become that parent you'll mm -hmm. surprise yourself like oh this is how I am as a mom or like, you know, but I think your parenting is a big reflection on all of your personalities though. Yeah. yeah. Like Cheyenne is the middle of both of you. Like she's she is. like the balance between you. Kyle's very much free and pay. Like she, I think you have the most actually no, you and Cheyenne both have a lot of patience. Um, yeah, you guys are very patient with do. how you guys parent. Like you guys allow things to happen and then you will assert React. yourself. Yeah. Um, when needed. Um, Shannon's more of a well what did I tell you and how are we going to <laughs> respond the voice like type of thing like, <laughs> Shannon does, like but you're not I don't I wouldn't necessarily say you're strict I think you're a lot more um, affirming immediately like say Parker's mm. older Shannon can get away with that if I say that's a boss boss might but kick I feel me like in. even no, though, <laughs> no. boss needs a good I don't old think I feel like well, even I remember is, when he was younger boss is older boss or not. Is getting better. like I'm figuring out my balance of being more firm with him and like mm -hmm. being more like no boss this is what we said this is the order and it's um now he likes to mess with me where he'll be like mom I said please and thank you is it boy, you better stop playing my eyes. And I'm like, kid. <laughs> so it's like, Ma, Bo, Maz. Boz is now learning how, like, you know, oh, I'm cute. I can get away with I can get things. away with, mm -hmm. yes. He and it's it. like, now my brother is here, so my mom might be distracted, and I can <laughs> get away with something. So it's, uh. See, but I don't think you're not, I think that you are, you are affirming, and when it's needed Got it. like you will allow oh, you allow yeah, him to just learn from the process like yes. you'll be like well you're gonna hurt yourself and yeah. Yeah. then we'll have the conversation i think she needs to be stricter sometimes, i think that sometimes. boz needs a good old-fashioned spanking that's because boz is very um wild and he's gonna get hurt <laughs> if he don't do some of the things he does he almost got kicked by a horse the other day no, no he didn't. Boz really almost got yes. kicked by a horse it was to the point where i'm like the, the bro, people were like he okay. could have really gotten hurt and his ass don't want to listen yeah he doesn't yeah. <laughs> no. don't get me wrong boss is a, is a Wait, good kid no he, he's an amazing he, kid. i don't want to people that think he, was he is horse. an amazing kid he, he was petting the horse and then he wanted to give the horse a hug honestly oh, oh no uh, uh, my so mom I, and i are like 
<laughs> so it wasn't that like, he was even doing anything bad or being wild. He was like, oh, you know, but he he's just as free as you. He's, that's he's just that's young and he's, you know, he's, <laughs> he's three. He's, he's, he's just free. as free yes. as you. That's yes. my thing. Kyle, you didn't listen either. Now look what you got. Two boys, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Oh my uh-huh. goodness, Shannon, um, you leaving? No, Shannon blew a booger out her. Okay, well, I got a piece. I love seeing um, how chaotic your guys' podcast can be. Um, luckily, we were in a studio, so we just went in and out. First <laughs> off, we are we are we are figuring out a studio space. Oh, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying um, Shannon kicking over this oh. <laughs> this light. That's one thing I couldn't I couldn't do. I give you guys props for that because being able to set that up in um, the we house. We have to be inventive because, uh, number one, our schedules and the kids' schedules. Oh, no, I know. I would have loved to have an at-home um, studio. We probably would have still been doing our podcast if we did. <laughs> yeah, but, but um, I give it props to you guys of figuring out studio time and all that. Right. I mean, How, I was, was that easier. expensive? It was, it, there was money out of our pockets for sure. It wasn't yeah. cheap. No way. Yeah. Like, was that expensive at all? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess so. It was like a thousand dollars a month. Yeah, that's, that's expensive. expensive. Oh, okay. <laughs> what? No, yeah. thank you. I'm splitting it between that's two rent. Other people. <laughs> that's rent. That's still expensive. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But anyway, I think it was easy because they did our editing and so we oh, did, they did okay, most of our okay. video editing. So like we would get it and we would just add what's needed, like Got our it. intro and our music. So. Okay. so you're not just paying for the space, you're paying for the production editing, also. Yeah, because we had like an engineer. So they would Oh, wait, do. so now I get why it costs that much. I yeah. thought you were just paying for the space. space. No, right. we paid for the space. We paid for our engineer. They did the video and we had like three different shots, like three, four different cameras. No, I shots looked at it. I liked the way it was shot. Yeah, so it was like, it, was, I did too. it just made it easy easier yeah so nice. and we liked that we each had our individual camera right. and everything That's so cool. it was good i All liked right. it, it was good. so every week we end our podcast by telling either advice and it could be advice about anything in the world or a wtf moment from your week um tina since you are our guest you can go first oh i got a wtf moment what is it um, girl don't buy an old car they're fun to drive but stupid when you gotta fix them I it sounds like advice. <laughs> <laughs> it's an advice with the WTF moment is why. I love I got a Jeep Wrangler it was a 99. Beautiful. I love it. It's my baby. But I was driving. No engine light was on. No nothing. Driving on the freeway. Heard a noise. It's like, what's that? That sounds weird. That started sounds pulling weird. to the right a little bit. All of a sudden my speedometer started going down. <laughs> down. I was like, maybe I should pull over. Well, I pulled over at the right time because <laughs> there was somewhere to pull over. Firstly, I was almost to my uncle's house. Um, my car just stopped. Smoke started coming. Oh, no. But you know what? I do have an advice in that moment. Don't stress because God will send something better. Yes. Because yeah, I have, I'm real. not stressed about it. I'm like, oh, well, I don't care right now. Right. But I'm actually very surprised that I'm not stressed about it. I usually would stress out about something like this and like have a, like a well, look at reaction. you grow, girl. I'm like, you know what? That's fine. I'm just gonna get a new car and it's gonna happen and I'm gonna be happy about it and I won't have this issue anymore. So there you go. That was my I WTF. Like that. I like that energy. <laughs> you took it. You made it into a Shaman? good thing. Not yet. Go. Um, <laughs> oh, mine's a pure WTF. So last night. Or yesterday, we had a great day. We all hung out. Mm-hmm. Kids had a blast in the pool with Tina. Um, so Boz, at some point, went upstairs to Papa Dave and said, Papa, I'm tired. And he fell asleep with him around like six something. Oh, that was the problem. So I, I told like, her, did y'all not hear right, me say? Yes, her, I said, said, if he goes to sleep right now, said, what are yeah, you going to do for the night time? I said, he might sleep all night. No, you said, no, no, he's, no, like, he's going to sleep all night. Wait, and I was looking at you like, right, mm-hmm. confidence. You, she, she was trying to, so mani- much confidence. Look, trying to manifest <laughs> something. <laughs> like, like, now what happened? Yeah, right. What actually happened? He didn't take a nap that day. This has happened before. Well, he, that'll be his sleep and he'll be knocked out. Mm-hmm. Okay. So he woke up. And At what came time? in the room. He was, I don't know, maybe like around <laughs> 10 something. Oh, he woke up with a vengeance. That boy had a good nap. Like nine something. I'm back. <laughs> back. Where's my friends at? Uh, he did ask. I said, everyone went home, baby. And he said, 
He said, oh, okay. And then he started squirming. <laughs> oh, shit. I was like, okay, my son has to pee. So we go to the bathroom. That's also him resetting himself. Yeah, like, he weird. started crying. He was like, I don't want to pee. Like, I don't need to go. And I was like, bro, your body is telling you you got to go. Like, I see it. So he'll pull his little shorts down, sit him on the toilet, and he's still screaming. He's got his arms straight down on the side of the toilet. And I'm like, hold your penis. Like, hold oh. your penis. Like, get it in. Oh, okay. And then he's like, oh, I don't God. have to pee. Then he starts peeing. And in like, the toilet, right? He's in right. the toilet, <laughs> but it's like shooting up. Oh, and no. I, at first, I was like, oh, it's not coming out. And Why I thought it was like coming back in somehow. Then all of a sudden, it felt like a scary movie, like a, <laughs> like a lava out of a volcano. It what the just fuck? Kyle. I'm so confused. It started, it, it started it flowing over. Out of the toilet seat <gasps> between the, the. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Sorry. Oh, it was. I'm trying to keep from crying because last night was so wild. Um, it was coming from between the <laughs> lid and the actual toilet. I it had was, to give Buzz back. <laughs> it was streaming down. Mind you, Zaire's sleep knocked out. Like I'm like, yeah, one kid's down. Let me just get this one. So then he's still screaming about his pee. And then he had this like rubber lizard in his hand and he dropped the lizard and then it was <gasps> it's not my a- lizard's in the pee. Oh so my he- god. <laughs> <laughs> and when I tell you, like I'm sitting there like frantic. Zaire is now awake because boss is screaming. So I've got Zaire oh in god. one hand. There's literally a flood of pee. Like by now I, I went I just grabbed a towel, put the towel down, because it was like there was so much pee. And Boz is still screaming on the toilet. So then I'm like, okay, I got to get you in the bath. So I turn the bath on. He's like screaming even louder now. So I hear screaming in my ear. Oh my it was a full of like moment. Mom's downstairs and everything in me was like, just go ask for help. And at first I was like freaking out. And then I was like, no, you got this. Like <laughs> you're a mama too. Like you got it, you badass bitch. So I throw Boz in the tub. I get Zaire to calm down. Like, Bitch, you got help around you. Go ahead. That's what I, I was just going to say. But it was one of those sh- things where I was like, by the time I go downstairs and do all this, like I could just have, have, it, I could just have it done. And mm-hmm. that's where I'm like, that's when I kick in an overdrive. I'm like, this moment is just temporary. Like, yeah. this is a temporary moment. Mm-hmm. And then it was fine. And then I went downstairs because Bob was like, I would like a snack. <laughs> mm-hmm. Got a good so, nap. Now he needs like eat. a snack. So I'm like, bro, okay. So we go downstairs. Mom's are like, are you okay? Like, I think I told her what I told her what happened. She's like, why didn't you get me? And I was like, girl, no. I just had to deal with We're it. We're here getting a snack now, you know. But that was kind of where I was. But it was definitely a WTF moment because I was. So like, what time did he end up going back to sleep? Uh, maybe like 11:30. Oh, that's not too bad. He has that's school the next day. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not bad. too bad from him waking up at 10, though. Is what I'm no, saying. No, and he oh, slept, yeah. you know. And it's like it was more like 9:30, I want to say. So he was up for like two hours, but he was in bed. And I kept saying he was in his bed. And then he did this whole I'm hot dance where he wants to strip all his clothes off. Oh my off. God, Ryder does that. <laughs> so then, then, he, and then he started going, Mom, I'm really cold. Oh my <laughs> Boy, Mom, I'm really me. cold. Help me. I come over there and she's, he's like all the way naked. I'm like, where'd your undies go? And he's like, they're with my pants. So I'm like, bro. So we put his undies back on, get him tucked into bed. He finally goes back to sleep. And he slept in his bed for the rest of the night. So it was great. It was great. It was great. A what the fuck moment with a successful ending. Oh my god! But there was so much pee. It was, it was <laughs> insane. Um, I'll give my advice. This weekend, I had a night to myself, mm-hmm. and I never really, whenever I think you guys know, and I've talked about this. Whenever Parker leaves me, like I get really lost in my life, and I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> but this Saturday, I took it upon myself. I took a shower. Got relaxed, lotioned my body, put yes. a really cute, sexy, like, nighty on. And I turned on YouTube and was playing music videos, a lot of, like, Afro beats. And I was just shaking my ass around my house. Yeah. And it was <laughs> that sounds the best. Like, I had a some wine and i was just fucking feeling myself sorry for my language (laughs) but i was just feeling myself like i was just in a zone of like just live those afro beasts watching everyone shake their ass 
get and to, I girl. Was like, I was just like, yeah. I was like. Shanna said, I, I am in Africa was, right now living my best yes, life. I was like, I was like in the moment of like missing Africa and like the vibes of just feel good and like everyone mm. just happy. So like, I was just. My advice is like sh- go around your house, be naked. <laughs> like I didn't have any underwear on. Like mm-hmm. I was just happy. That's Welcome to my and life. Then, yeah, I was say, that's <laughs> smart. It was just it was like one of those moments. Like why don't I do this more often when Parker's not there? So it was just a moment of like enjoying your, your enjoying time. my my time of like feeling myself, just being loose. Because most of the time I'm all the time I'm so tense. <laughs> I'm a, I feel like I'm a very tense like sh- person. So I feel like I was like, let me just let down my hair a little bit and just live life and get this moment of freedom. So go shake your ass at home by yourself and you don't have your shake kids. It. We saw Shannon after Watch that yourself. and she was so happy. And I was like, I'd love to and see And then this. somebody Just pumped me up and told me my butt was getting bigger. But of course, right, yeah, right. of course they told we're me here, my We're ass. here to, we're here we're to, to bring, bring her back, back to reality. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's cut all that out. <laughs> bring it back, girl. Bring I it back. I wish I could make a sound of like a deflating balloon <laughs> where it's like, stop. Not you the guys, deflating yeah, balloon. I think that's that was not popping the bubble. I right. still popping on pop my bubble. I still popping. I just I said it was good. Popping. It's, it's okay, still wait. Deep lady. <laughs> know what it is? We just need to put on our uh, our good American jeans and lift it right back there up. There we go. Okay, Ooh. what's your shy? Dang, shy you oh my so <laughs> sorry. I'm exhausted. I, I guess that's my WTF. My dad was like, I'm gonna because he lives like an hour away. So he in the office is not far from my house, like 15 oh minutes. God, so he was like, weekend. Oh, I'm gonna come and stay for the night. That's all right. And I'm like, All right. But the thing is, we also had Ryder this weekend. So normally when he comes, he stays in. He calls it the unicorn bed, <laughs> and it's no problem because he sleeps in his crib. Zach and I still have our space, you know. But this weekend we had Ryder, just trying to give Corey and Taylor some you know, breathing room before the new baby. Um, That's nice of you guys. And Ryder would sleep in the bed with Papa, but then she would wake up around like 2 a.m. and would come and find me. And it's not like I can walk back into her room and get back in the bed with her and help her go back to sleep. I'd be like, right, go get back in your bed. She's like, Papa is snoring. And I was just about to say, I don't know how she sleeps. So your dad is the loudest snore ever. It literally felt like so. He ended up staying the. He ended up staying three nights. He was oh, supposed no. to stay one night. You gotta go, Papa. So <laughs> every night it, we would end up with Ryder and Ace. For some reason, Ace didn't want to sleep in the crib, in the bed, oh, no. and Zach and I were like, and Deuce. And we don't, our bed is like a normal size, like king. And it's not that much space when there's like two grown people, a dog, a half person, and then a baby. Like, <laughs> a And person. Ryder takes up the space of like three and yes, a half people. Ryder sleeps so crazy. So I'm, mm-hmm. I guess my WTF is that I am simply exhausted because I have not slept. Yes. Well, at least your dad got some sleep. Oh, Limbs he had everywhere. great sleep. <laughs> he had great he, sleep. Literally, he packed up his stuff yesterday. He was like, whoop, I wasn't expecting to say this song. I'm still in the same t-shirt, but I had fun with you guys. I'm <laughs> oh like, my gosh. I literally want to say get out, okay? Because I'm exhausted. <laughs> get out. Just get out. My house. Well, Cheyenne m- cooked a really good meal on Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, like, we had a good weekend. We had a nice weekend. We also What'd went to a, a graduation or a graduation party Friday night for our cousin, graduated from USC. So it's been like no, we had a good a nice, weekend, yeah, but it was definitely weekend. like my WTF is that I am. Exhausted. Y'all always hear me talk about being exhausted, but I feel like I'm extra exhausted right now. Make sure you take a nap today. I wish, <laughs> but I keep checking my phone. Like, what did time just pick up? But yeah, it was just a lot. It was it was a lot, but it was a, a great weekend. But um, I need to get some sleep. But that was mine, Tina. Thanks for joining yes, us. Thanks yes. for coming. It's been fun. I really loved being praised and all that stuff. <laughs> Come back anytime <laughs> to get praised. Do it whenever you guys. Like, you used to text me, call me, be like, "Hey, Tina, I just want to call you and say you're amazing." We also need to know when <laughs> Ao. What the fuck is back? I'll let you know when Ao. What the fuck is back? Go check it out on YouTube. Maybe on, we could do a collab. On, that would actually be hilarious. I, like I feel that'd you, be fun. You guys would love that, and we will turn you guys out. <laughs> Oh, uh, excuse us. Just because we are mothers does not does mean we mean? have not no, no. lived um, our lives. I'm not saying that. I'm saying we turn you out alive. Like people gonna see it. 
Oh. in a whole different way. <laughs> like, we're going to bring we up say, different conversations. Uh, okay. okay. We're going to touch on different things. So you guys Ooh. go and check check out Life. Ayo, what Life the fuck. You can also follow me on Instagram at Christina.Deshawn. Yes. Say it louder yes. for us. Chris, Christina.Deshawn. No, I got to put on my sexy voice. <laughs> oh, why? Done. Why don't we ever put our sexy voice on? <laughs> I'm Cheyenne and you can follow me at <laughs> Shy Not Shy. <laughs> I'm not sexy, so. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sexy. I'm Shannon, and you can follow me at Hair by Shannon C. You get your hair done. That's your, your sexy your voice. <laughs> Come on, Kyle, you can do it. Come on, Kyle. We know Come you on. have a sexy There's voice. Too much hold on, hold on. Hey, Kyle, put on your sexy voice. I don't like the way you guys are looking at me. Hi, I'm hey. Kyle. Hey, my name I'm is R. Kyle. And I'm Ooh! And you can find me at R. Kyle. Uh, <laughs> and this is the way she blinked in between her names <laughs> uh, and this word. is the think loud crew you guys can follow us at the think, think loud, loud crew. crew don't forget and to like comment subscribe and check us out on all podcast platforms and check out our youtube channel which is also think loud crew Woo. love you guys Try have those a good notifications week on. bye thanks for having me Sometimes there's nothing easier than ordering takeout for dinner. It feels easy, but it's expensive. On the other hand, just thinking about the grocery store and having to play the what's for dinner game is exhausting. If you hate grocery shopping or simply don't have the time, Hungry Root is here to help. Hungry Root is the easiest way to get fresh, high quality food delivered to your door. They've got healthy groceries and simple recipes all in one place. A fun, short quiz is all Hungry Root needs to get to know you your goals, and how you like to eat. Are you gluten-free? Noted. Do you like sweets? They'll keep it top of mind and get to work. Hungry Root will recommend groceries they think you'll love. Take their suggestions or choose what you want from fresh produce. High quality meat and seafood, pantry staples, and all the healthy snacks and sweets you'll ever need. Lately, Boz has been on a peanut butter kick and we got this peanut butter pouch from Hungry Root and he's really been enjoying it. You're not just getting your weekly grocery haul. You can also shop thousands of simple recipes that actually put your food to use. Everything Hungry Root offers follows a simple standard. It has to be delicious, quick to prepare, and made from whole, trusted ingredients. Spend less time shopping and cooking and more time enjoying healthy food that you'll actually love with Hungry Root. Right now, Hungry Root is offering Think Loud Crew listeners, 30% off your first delivery and a free gift with every delivery. Just go to HungryRoot.com slash Think to get 30% off your first delivery and choose your free gift. That's HungryRoot.com slash Think. Don't forget to use our link so they know we sent you.